when you can actually see your profit for the year in, in dollars and cents, you, it, it gets you more in the notion of selling corn, knowing that I can lock in a $50,000 profit or whatever the profit is, you want to lock it in. If I know I can make that much profit in a year, I will be in business next year. Good afternoon and welcome to Grain TV. It's June 6, 2013. I'm Logan Burgess. To my right here is Brock Shimano. Brock, let's jump into fire tip. See how the grains traded here on a Thursday. As you can see, we had old crop corn picking up two and a half cents. New crop corn up six cents. Old crop beans backing off a bit, down four and three quarters. New crop beans picking up five and three quarters. Uh, Chicago wheat relatively unchanged, down three and three quarters on the day. Quiet day in Kansas City as well, down four and three quarters there. You know, Brock, fundamentally, we didn't have a lot of news out this morning. The one exception was the export sales report. Uh, can you kind of break down the numbers there? What did we see? You know, I don't think it was a big driver of the markets here today. We didn't really get any surprises out of the export sales. Yeah. Um, you know, what we did get is uh, wheat. We saw net reductions on the old crop by about 33,000 metric tons. We are, we're coming to the end of the marking year, or we are at the mar end of the marking year for wheat. Right. So that's to be expected this time of year. Uh, but for new crop, we did see pretty good sales for, for wheat, 665,000 metric tons there. Uh, old crop corn, 107,000 metric tons. That was right within analyst expectations. New crop, a little bit light, 51,000 metric tons. The low end of expectations was 500,000 metric mm -hmm. tons, so light on new crop corn. And soybeans, we came in at 48,000 metric tons on the old crop. New crop, we had pretty good sales, 589,000 metric tons. You know, certainly looking here at the old crop numbers, uh, next week we do have a WASI report. We're going to be getting that out on Wednesday. I know export sales has been something that, that's been kind of hotly contested, I guess, on the old crop. Uh, do you think, given the numbers that we saw here and over the last couple weeks, do you think there's, there's a possibility the USDA may make a revision? Uh, on Wednesday's report, I guess, for those old crop sales? You know, let's take a look at the chart we've been following all marketing along. Uh, the, the red line here is the seasonal pace we need to meet the current USDA projections. Uh, this is for corn export sales. You can see the blue, lo uh, blue bars are what we have been seeing for our weekly export sales. We did fall a little bit short this week on corn to meet the USDA projections, uh, but for the year we're still about 16 million bushels behind on corn. A, a little bit of a different story for soybeans. We're still running about 42 million bushels ahead, even though we, over the last part of the, this last couple months of the marketing year, we have been falling pretty substantially on that yeah. pace we are ahead. Uh, but as far as corn and soybeans are concerned, I don't think we'll see revisions there. Where we might see revision is in the wheat export sales uh, projections. Um, like I said, we're at the end of the marketing year, but right. we're still about 21 million bushels behind to meet the current USDA projections. So we could see a slight revision to the wheat uh, export sales. Certainly. As coming into uh, in next Wednesday's uh, report, we will keep you posted on any um, private analyst expectations. We'll be tweeting about those at Grain TV or here we'll be reporting them on Grain TV as well. You know, Brock, over the last couple of days, though, or really the last couple of weeks, I guess, we've seen some interesting action uh, in the spreads here for soybeans in particular. Let's take a look here. Uh, we put together this chart here. The vertical axis is cents, and the blue line here is the spread between the July and the August contract. The red line here is average basis across the U.S. Uh, against that July contract for spot delivery. And I know last week on Grain TV, we talked about it quite a bit. Really this dramatic collapse in basis that we saw last week, about 50 cents on average. And really what was one thing that was driving that was, was the role that a lot of elevators uh, made between the July contract and the August contract. And if you look at how that role kind of affected the spread between those two contracts, you can see that uh, it picked up quite a bit. It really helped widen that spread as elevators were buying the July contract and selling the deferred August contract. Um, so that's kind of what we saw in soybeans. Now we haven't seen that roll um, hit the corn market yet. Take a look here at this slide. You can see here very similar. The blue line is the spread between the July and the September uh, contracts and the red line here is average basis against that July. So we've seen basis remain relatively unchanged averaging about 32 cents over the July contract. But we haven't seen big players in the corn market yet make that roll between July and September. We've seen a few facilities do it, but we haven't seen the big players in Cedar Rapids, Columbus, or Blair make the move. And when that does happen, we'd expect that to help widen that spread again. Uh, as I said, as they buy the July and sell the September, uh, and certainly looking here at the spread right now, we did see it back off a little bit in today's action, but we wouldn't be surprised if we saw this thing hit a buck before uh, that July contract goes off the board. So that's just something to keep an eye out. Certainly people that have been trading spreads, this is something to keep 
uh, kind of abreast to, and we'll help you keep uh, uh, in tune to that situation here on Grain TV. But as I said, uh, when we expect to see that roll July into September, certainly expect it to help widen that spread a little bit. You know, I think that's been a theme in the markets here all, all week long. We've yeah. really seen a lot of bull spreading, uh, especially in the corn and soybean markets. And yeah. I think we'll continue to see that as we head towards first Noah's Day, which come up, which is coming up on June 28th. Yeah. Also on that day, we get a couple of large reports from the USDA. So I'm sure that the big commodity funds and the big uh, commercial funds will want to roll ahead of that time period. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, we do have a special here going at Grain Hedge. If you sign up for a new account before that big report on June 28th, uh, we'll refund the cost of your wire and give you four free trades. So anybody out there that's been thinking about opening a Grain Hedge account, now's a great time to do it. If you have any questions about that, you can visit us online at uh, www.grainhedge.com or you can always give us a call here at the office. Our number is 877-472-4607. In general, Brock, I think that's kind of what we saw here for a Thursday in the grain market. Thanks a lot for joining us on Grain TV. We'll see you tomorrow for the weekly wrap-up.